Welcome to this video. I'm going to be um, telling you about how to get the uh, system design document done nicely. I'm going to be going through the rubric as well as a sample document for that. Um, so starting off with the rubric, the first point is your user interface design. Um, in effect, what we need here is we need a picture of your screen. We need you to describe the data that's needed on your screen, and I need you to describe all of sorry that the data that the screen will be using, and I need you to you I need you to describe all of the actions that the user can take. So in other words, what can the user interact with? Um, so taking a look at the, um, one of the samples, you can see over here for the user interface design. This is the login screen. Um, they've created the whole login screen in. Um, it means using Swing. Obviously, you're not restricted to using Swing. You could use anything else, although it does have to be in Java. Um, and then there's a username and password where the user can type in their data. And then there are four buttons the user can click on. First off, a brief overview. So it's just explaining what the screen does. So it says, you know, this is the first uh, screen that pops up. It's the first one they can interact with. Um, and the user can click on those four buttons. And then there are also two text fields that the user can uh, fill in data with. What data is there? And then it's the user's login details. I think I'd like slightly more detail than that. So it's just like, you know, just like a username and uh, the username can be entered through the username text field. The password can be entered through the password text field. That, then that's fine for data. Then the actions, we've gone through every single button, the login button, the create new account, the help and the exit button, and then what happens. So uh, this uh, guy was using a text file instead of a database. So when he clicked login, it, um, then the program, I wouldn't go with it, what's it? So it'd go, uh, the program runs through the text file, checking whether the user's input in the text fields corresponds with the data in the text file. If the input matches and is correct, the login screen will close and the user will proceed to the main menu screen. Um, so uh, that's, that's kind of what I want there. Um, you would just say, we'll query the database. You're not going to worry about how exactly you're going to query the database or the actual sort of algorithm. That'll come in later. But just basically describing what happens when the login button is pressed. Um, similarly, the create new account, the help, and the exit. Then there's a main menu screen. Um, and similar thing, you'll see there's no data here. But there, um, I suspect, in fact, what, what he would have done is that he's going to pass the user as an object to the screen. I that's really important. A lot of the marks are for um, sending mark uh, data around and having um, uh, parameters in methods. So it is important that you send things through. And also, you know, when you're going to want to, in this case, is going to want to set a score, you need to know who the user is. Uh, maybe you're doing a um, cricket thing, you know, um, app, and then you need to know, is the guy a player? In which case, you know, he's going to give certain access rights. Or is he a coach? In which case, he's being able to change the team or whatever. So you are definitely going to need to send the user at a minimum through to your other screens. I will show you how to do that in the workshop. And there are four buttons, once again. Um, brief description. Data does not take in any data from the user. I would honestly say I'd like to see you there saying something like, I'm going to send the user data. Uh, the user data will be sent here from the login screen. And then a brief description of what happens with each button. And you can see we don't need an essay. Similarly for the help screen, help screen will pop up whenever the user selects help button, blah, 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 um, data. Um, so over here, selecting a topic is uh, kind of like input slash data or whatever. Uh, um, but I mean, I'd be quite fine, you know, if you put that into um, just the, the actions portion, like when they click on this, what happens? And note the details. So rules of the game, runs a scanner to find and fetch the corresponding explanation for the rules of the game. It displays in the text field. You obviously are going to be searching a database. You don't need to go too much more uh, detailed than that. Personal best screen. Um, no data taken in by the user. All the data is written from the text file, or in your case, the database, um, and so forth. And that's really what, you, and then over here, the game screen. His is different. For most of you, you won't be doing a game, so your, all your screens are going to be buttons and things. So, like, if we're talking about a cricket one, you might say the data, um, like, maybe you're going to be able to search for a player. I don't know what you're going to be able to do. You know, in which case, the data would be the user can type in the, uh, the player name. Or maybe then, you know, the user can click, uh, you know, on, uh, like, you know, can choose different options. Like, maybe the, you'll have, like, fields for, like, uh, like you'll have a radio box which has got like under 14, 15, 16 open thing and the user can click that. That's all the data. And then actions. 
in his case, his actions were like pushing arrow keys, pushing spacebar, pushing escape. Uh, you might have all on-screen buttons, and that's fine. Pause screen, etc. Right, sequences and algorithms, and you're probably going to find that there's a bit of overlap in your um, GUI design and your sequencing. Like you're going to see over here, uh, so yeah, for login, run through the text file, text for the input uh, corresponds, um, if it's correct, login screen closes, user proceeds to the main menu screen, etc. And you're going to see a very similar sort of thing. Um, yeah, it is perhaps a lot better to just go a little bit beyond what you want if you want that 100%. Because again, these are going to be moderated at the end of the year, and I don't want them to moderate down. Because they're going to be really finicky about uh, like words like all, which we'll get to. Um, anyway, let's look at the rubric for the sequencing. Sequencing is broken into sections to cover all aspects of the functions. So if you're leaving methods out or you're leaving little portions out or I can see that, you know, stuff's not going to work from the design point of view, I'm not going to give you four or five um, and you're going to have to uh, fix it. Flow is clear, well represented and easy to understand. No logic gaps are evident. Um, so in this section, you describe the flow events in the program. Planning this can make your program easier or more logical to use. Um, template contains flow charts. The can may use algorithmic representation. Um, I do want some kind of algorithms in here. So if you do decide to use a flowchart, which is fine, you know, you'll have your start thing and then you'll have your screen, you are going to have to build these algorithms into the flowcharts. And honestly, I think just typing it out might be the uh, easier option. So uh, what happens here? The user clicks on the login button. And here you can see we're really going to detail. The game searches user data.txt text file. Username input, that's just a, a local variable he's using, becomes the TXF username input from user. Password input becomes the TXF password input from user. Create a new scanner. While the scanner file is the next line and BDN find equals false, do this. Um, you'd be doing a database, and I would want to see the SQL query here. Um, so I want to see the SQL query in your pseudocode. Or the user creates a new account. So over here, he's got this like level one bullet point which is um, the user types in username and password, and then the level two, after he's done that, he can click on login. He might not type in a username and password. He might instead start by creating a new account. So create a new account is at the same level. Um, or, you know, and then over here, um, this is what's going to happen. Um, he's got his new account literally on the same screen. Um, he's talking here. The user clicks the OK button. So... Um, I would be looking at this and I'd say, where's your OK button? And I would not give you full marks for that, even though this is like one of the examples. Um, and there we go. Once again, we've got a rubric um, for what's happening. Not a rubric, an algorithm for what's happening. Um, and then over there, or you go to this screen, or, you know, whole algorithm here. Um, he's doing a whole thing with, like, it's a real pain, I think, you know, doing the scanner. Like, you're literally going to be like one line because you're just doing a SQL search. And then, you know, if found is true, you don't, um, you don't have to do that. You would be like, um, if the result set contains a matching record, uh, display the message username already exists. This is for creating a new user or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Um, the help screen, this is going to be quite simple because it's literally going to be, you click on help, um, or you click on this topic or you click on that topic, and then um, whatever. You can see here, he didn't put a whole bunch of, Things for buttons, it was acceptable to say, depending on what whole topic the button the user selects, the game searches you the user help data dot text file for the corresponding. There's the whole scanner thing, and once again reading in, I suggest again using a database, but whatever. Um, or the user wants to access personal best, blah, blah, blah. The real sort of uh, meat of the screen in this project's case would be the, um, uh, the game screen, and I'm not seeing it. Um, which is interesting. Oh, there we go. Start game. Okay, so over here, start game. He just didn't display the actual game screen. Um, but yeah, this is what happens. Play alive is three, while alive equals two. You do this, blah, 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 blah. So again, I need to see um, rubrics. Um, the one thing I think that is missing here is um, he's not talking about how we're going to respond to inputs. So I would want to see that. So like, you know, if you push his W, um, uh, that should be in here somewhere. So definitely in our for loop here, there should be something about, you know, looking for um, input or whatever. Cool. Um, class diagrams. So class diagrams, class design. 
uh, provide the class design, explain the choice of cl fields, class methods. Okay, once again, if you want six to eight marks, class design is thorough. All fields and methods are present and well described. Submethods are present. Methods and fields clearly relate back to the specifications document. Um, you can see what they've done here is they have not done uh, classes for their um, the front end. That is fine. I have to see class design diagrams for all of your back end code. So um, he's got a user who's got a whole bunch of things. Uh, you know, um, he's got a username and a password, and there's a whole bunch of things you can do. Um, he's got a user character. That I think that's that's an object representing the thing that was playing on the thing. So you'd have things like you'd have a user. Um, and going back to cricket, you have a user, you'd have a username, you'd have a password, and then you'd have like a um, an access level, like it's a, or a security level that would be like a coach, player, or whatever. Um, and again, uh, you then you'd you'd probably have a teams object, and the teams object would um, be a, a, a list of uh, probably users, uh, sorry, an array of users, and you'd be able to add people to the team, remove people to the team. Um, maybe you'd have the the the, the record of uh, the matches somewhere in your in your uh, teams thing you know you'd have an array of matches or something um, bots these were things these were uh, obviously enemies in the game there's an array of them so I need to see back-end classes if you don't have a whole bunch of back-end classes you're not you, you're going to lose tons of marks um, okay persistent storage design and so over here record structure is described fields are listed types and described data structure for text or type fields is described Storage design is appropriate to purpose and matches the spec document's requirements. Um, so over here, he's gone with text files. You're using databases. Um, the, so the first thing he's done is he said the user data, um, and that's what brief description of what's going to be, the formats it in, and some sample data. You would be using a database. You'd have a table. You'd have a user table. You'd explain what the user table holds, and then you'd show me the structure. It is fine to just copy and paste from access here. Um, so if you have not data in the access thing, um, but you know your your actual design. So if you've got things like uh, your user, you'd have a username, you'd have a password, and the username would be a short text, and the password would be a short text, and stuff like that. It's also done the help data and the high score screen. Again, it's going to depend on what you have. Um, so you're probably again going back to cricket. You'd have users, you'd have teams, um, you'd probably have results or matches. Um, and, and so forth. And all of those would have different fields. Finally, explanation of storage design. Explanation shows in-depth understanding of the implications of the storage design is completely justified. Why did you choose the storage method you chose? Why did you choose to use a database? You can't just say because I forced you to. So there you'd be doing things like it's, it's um, quick and efficient to search. Um, and you know things like that. It's uh, easy to add things in, um, you know, something like that. And then um, over here, primary storage. This is you haven't come up across this yet in terms of the, the the point. What objects are you going to have in each of your screens? And specifically, yeah, it's been mainly front end. So in the login screen, um, he's going to have a user. That so we're not just talking about permanent storage here. We're also talking about storage in RAM. And that's what the, the primary storage is. What's going to be stored in RAM on each screen? Uh, the username is going to be stored and the actual user object. On the main menu screen, the user object. In the personal best screen, the user object. In the help screen, things like that. Um, in his game screen, he'd probably have the user. He'd have a um, user character. He'd have enemy characters. Um, so I would not have given the guy full marks. Um, and I won't give you full marks if you're missing data like that. Um, and then an explanation of brief of the classes um, and your everything else that's being stored in databases. Okay, um, how are the user class and other classes linked? I don't need that here. That's going to come into your coding and stuff. So, so don't worry about that. Um, cool. All right, um, there we go. So hopefully that helps you get started with the system design document.